of also featuring old Madonna. It's PDQ Live. Hey everybody, welcome to PDQ Live. Uh, <laughs> I love I love doing these, mm -hmm. but I love it more when we bring in an expert so I can just sit here and look pretty because that's what I'm best at. It is, indeed. So today we're talking simple MDM, mm -hmm. and we brought in actual legend, Zach Fagan, who's going to teach us everything we need to know about handling mobile devices. I thought you were going to say Yoda, but yeah, Zach's good too. He's all right. I will take actual legend as an intro. I'm pretty down with that. <laughs> pretty down. Hey guys. All right, how's it going? So this is your second time coming in here. I keep on looking at the TV. I think I'm not supposed to do that. So I'm going to look it over is. here. I, I just want to say that PDQ is a place that makes dreams come true because I remember watching this webcast as a customer and repeatedly asking Jordan for a PowerShell t-shirt. And now here I am on the webcast for the second time and I own that PowerShell t-shirt. So you got it. Thanks for making my dreams come true, Jordan. Are you wearing it now though, Zach? That's a Star Wars shirt. No, we went Star Wars theme today. So I did the Star Wars shirt. But Good, good. As you should, yes. as you should. All right. So we, we covered kind of a uh, last time we yes. had on the man, the myth, the legend, mm -hmm, Zach. the, the basic overview of, mm -hmm. of the product, but today we want to go into a little bit more detail on the mobile device portion. Yes. All right. So yes. Let's... Cause, uh, well, we talked about it managing iPhones and Androids, but iPhones in particular in the enterprise is my least favorite thing to do. Like literally my least favorite thing to do. It is just a time suck. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. So this product is a dream come true for me. Literally. It would make my life so much easier. So um, I'm excited for Zach to talk about it. And do you remember last week, Jordan, when uh, someone asked us if uh, Simple MDM does smart groups like Jamf does? I do. So and you said... I said yes. Okay. And I, I did a little research, and my answer is still yes, but it's yes, but. So Jam does smart groups by device attributes. So you can create these smart groups and filter them based on those device attributes. So simple MDM doesn't do that natively. You can do it using the API, but natively it does not do that. So I did want to clarify that right out of the gate. So it's a yes, but it requires some coding on the back end. And you said yes. Python was the recommended. Yes. I, I can't help with Python. Yes. But simple MDM can help. Yes, so can. Uh, any questions that you have today or about that support at simple MDM can help you with that. So um, Zach, why don't we just do, I know you talked about this a lot on the last webcast, but why don't you just walk us through the enrollments first, just kind of talk about all the different kind of enrollments and give us just a, a quick summary review. Yeah, I think that's a good place to start. Um, let me share my screen with you, fine people. So maybe, you know, I'm, I'm like a Zoom professional until we get on a call and then I suddenly have no idea how to do anything. That's perfect. Uh, all right. We like that. Here we go. As all legends do. There it is. Can you yeah. guys see that? Yep. We can. That's a round awesome. of applause. Good job. Awesome. Yes. Legendary status solidified. <laughs> all right. So you got all these phones, right? And you want to get them into Simple MDM. Unfortunately, you can't just throw them at the computer that doesn't put them into Simple MDM. I tried. I broke a computer. <laughs> so we got a few ways to enroll those devices. Um, one is, and in, in, in what I really recommend if you can do it is what we call the automated enrollment. We kind of talked about that last time. Automated mm -hmm. enrollment is going to let you do what we call zero touch enrollment. It's another term for it. You can take those devices, add them to your Apple business manager account, which we'll go into a little bit today. And then when those devices power on and connect to the internet for the first time, they'll automatically add themselves to simple MDM, set themselves up, apply all the apps, profiles, everything you want to do just super quickly. We talked about it before, but you can see if you want to skip all these different panes, so your user doesn't have to go through that, you can, it's good stuff. The one downside to that is um, on your, your phones or your iPads, you're going to have to wipe the device to go through automated enrollment if it's not new. So we do have another option. You can also do what we call an enrollment by link. So we have a one-time or a group enrollment, depending on how many devices you want to enroll. Um, that allows you to just send a URL or a QR code, something like that, to your end user that enrolls them into a simple MDM. 
Um, you get most of what you get with the automated enrollment. The downsides there are, right, there's a little more user involvement. Um, if the user was to wipe a device, it would remove the enrollment, whereas automated enrollment, if they wipe it, it just re-enrolls itself back in a simple MDM. And there's a few things as far as um, there's certain actions you can't take and things that you can't lock down with profiles. So if you can, definitely do the automated enrollment. Um, if you can't, there's the enrollment by link. And then there's also, you can use a pro third-party product called Apple, Conf or I'm sorry, a product from Apple called Apple Configurator to add your devices as well. That's a little bit longer of a topic, but we may go through that in a future video or something like that. But um, just know that's out there as well to add your devices. But if you can, Apple Business Manager, automated enrollment, make your life easier. So with the Business Manager, that assumes that the company owns the device because you can wipe it completely. But that will, will that that's work correct. with someone with a bring your own device model? So that's a good question. So for a BYOD model, that's more where Apple has created the enrollment by link, right? We don't want um, the devices to be completely managed by the company because the user owns the device. Um, so that's a good use case for that. Um, automated enrollment, and I'm glad you said that because I didn't mention it, um, is more done for company-owned devices. So you're going to put company-owned devices in business manager and you're going to enroll them that way. Okay. Good question. That's enrollment. Okay. And then, so the one-time link, I'm really, I'm interested in that. Tell me a use case for that. Why would I, why would I do that? That seems like a one-off. Yeah. Yeah. So really the idea between the one-time and the group enrollment, they, they're kind of the same thing. The only difference is your group enrollment, you can enroll as many devices as you want using that. The one-time is literally a one-off one-time enrollment. Um, so okay. if you just wanted to, you didn't maybe accidentally want your, you know, sometimes you'll communicate something out to your users. They'll get confused. They'll do something they shouldn't. Maybe you're just trying to get one device into Simple MDM. You don't want that code passed around and have a bunch of other devices um, enrolling now on accident. That gives you the ability to say just this works one time and never again. Okay. So probably always for bring your own device scenario. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, for okay. BYOD you know, almost every time. Perfect. Okay. And then yeah. you you men mentioned Apple Configurator. Can we just do a quick summary of when, my, when we might use that? Absolutely. So... Typically, so Apple Configurator can do a couple of things. It can do a lot of things, but two of the main things are um, you can use it to add devices to your Apple Business Manager account. So that's a big one. So if you purchase if you purchase a device from Apple, Verizon, AT and T, several of these um, authorized. Um, Apple retailers, they can automatically add devices to your Apple Business Manager account for you. If you go to Best Buy or somewhere like that and you just buy your devices one off or they're all over the place, um, you can use Apple Configurator to add those devices to Business Manager for you. It's a little bit more of a manual process, but it's your best option if you didn't buy it through one of the big retailers. Um, the other nice thing is you can also use it to enroll devices directly into Simple MDM. So if you just don't have a business manager account, you don't want to mess with it, you can just use Configurator to enroll devices directly into Simple MDM as well. Okay. So is this a good time to kind of jump into Apple Business Manager and show us a little bit about that? Yeah, we could talk about that a little bit. Let's Hopefully do it. It hasn't logged me out by now. Cool. So this is business manager. I can't show everything. There's some sensitive data in there, right? But essentially business manager is going to let you add devices. So you can see our devices here and then let you point those devices at enrollments that you've created inside of simple MDM. That's where we get that zero touch enrollment, right? You can, uh, you can start up a device connected to the internet. Boom. You're ready to go. Um, it, it's going to let you do a few different things, right? So it's going to let you do that. It's also going to let you assign licenses to your end users, I'm sorry, assign apps to your end users without them having to sign in with an Apple ID. So if everybody's signing in with a personal Apple ID and you're trying to push apps, it's going to be kind of frustrating, right? Mm -hmm. This is going to give you that ability to say, okay, so I actually want to install, um, we'll say probably not Facebook. You've got a weird environment if you're installing Facebook automatically, but let's say we want to push Google earth through our devices, right? All you have to do is come out here, select your location. So we've preset that up. That's something that you'll configure inside of Simple MDM. Any Anytime that you're connecting Simple MDM to Apple Business Manager, we have instructions that are, you're being walked through on the page, right? So we're giving you detailed instructions. But if you do need assistance, support is always there, like we said earlier. Um, this is just simply going to let you add additional licenses. Um, so when you install an app on your iPhone, iPad, whatever at home, a license is being assigned in the background. You just don't see it happen. So Apple's doing this here and it's saying, okay, I'm going to add 50 licenses. Um, I now have a pool of 300 and something licenses. I'm not good at math that I can hand out. Um, and those are going to get pulled over into simple MDM. Once those are pulled over, you'll see those show up in your app catalog, right? So you can see the different applications. Um, let's see if Google earth. So there's Google earth. 
Uh, if I, I can, I'll have to go over and refresh that in a second, or you can wait and it'll refresh itself, but you'll see that new license count. And you can now install apps on your, on your devices that are managed by simple MDM without the end user even having to do anything, right? They don't okay. have to approve anything. They don't have to sign in. You're doing it all in the background. Cool. Okay. So Zach, I want, I want to back up just for a second. So, cause I, I worked in a school and we bought, we bought iPads in math. So say I'm in the summer, mm-hmm. I bought a thousand iPads and I bought them through Apple. So they're going to automatically show up in Apple business manager, right? So I'm going to see them in there. there Okay. So I want to buy five different apps for those, those iPads, right? I'm going to see them in Apple business manager. I want to make a MDM server for middle school. Right. Can I point it right there, right from Apple business manager? So you can create multiple different, um, so we call them, they're called enrollments inside of simple MDM. They're called MDM servers inside of Apple business manager. Mm -hmm. You can actually create as many enrollments as you want. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if there's any sensitive data on the enrollment screen, so I don't want to pull it up, but over here, um, you can create as many enrollments as you want. So one of the things that I tell people a lot is, right, you're going to want to probably put devices into groups as they enroll. So Mm -hmm. maybe you have your middle school, your Mm -hmm. high school, or maybe Mm -hmm. you have iPads, whatever. Um, you can actually set that on the enrollment. So you can create multiple different enrollments, set up a different initial device group and have your devices automatically put themselves in the correct place. Yeah. Um, all you have to do is point them at the correct enrollment inside of Apple Business Manager and they'll take a simple MDM will take care of everything else. Yeah. So if you buy a lot of Apple devices, it's, it definitely behooves you to use this workflow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Unless you want to add them one by one. It's, no, it's, that sounds horrible. I don't think you do. When, when you were buying the licenses, I mean, Google Earth is zero dollars, but if it's a... Uh, application that comes with a cost. Do you pay for that application when you order the licensing or is it when it installs on the device? Yes. So um, Apple Business Manager has a section where you can enter payment info. When you go to buy those licenses, they'll go ahead and charge you at that time for the licenses and then you can assign them out. So um, with free licenses, I always say grab more than you need so you don't have to go back out there. With paid licenses, obviously buy them as you need them. Okay. And then you talked about Apple Configurator. So if I did want to add my device to Apple Business Manager with Apple Configurator, then it's going to pop up inside Apple Business Manager. And then I can do the same thing you just talked about. Correct? Yeah. There's a short process for adding it mm-hmm. um, using the, the, you can use Configurator on Mac or uh, there is an iOS app. Now we have some guides out on um, simplemd.com that kind of walk through doing that. It, and then the device will show up inside of Apple yeah. um, Business Manager after that. Yep. So we're actually, we, I, we have all those guides and we're going to link them in the description today. So I went through and found everything they're going to need to do, kind of everything we're talking about today. So you won't have to worry about going out and finding it. We're going to link all those together. So, um, okay. So one last thing that we want to talk about, if if I change my mind and I want to release this device from one MBM server and attach it to another, can I do that in Apple Business Manager? It's yours forever. No, yeah, you can. So if you <laughs> no take to, backs. So if you wanted to, so let's say you're with a current MDM. Like mm-hmm. let's say great great example. There's an MDM um, called Fleetsmith that Apple acquired, and they're shutting it down. So a lot of people are moving uh, from that right now. You could release your device from Fleetsmith. So you do it inside of the MDM. Um, you can actually leave it in Business Manager. You don't have to remove it from Business Manager, and you can repoint it. So you can set up the new MDM server and repoint it to Simple MDM. Mm-hmm. Take it back to the enrollment process, and you're ready to go. Okay. So you can leave everything in Business Manager, no matter which MDM you're using. Okay. Does business business manager have a cost or is it just something you have to set it up for your organization? I, I need you to call it business manager, sir. Business, the business, Jordan. Put some respect on that name. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no <laughs> So business manager is a free uh, is offered for free from Apple. There's a, a several day process to get set up. So if you're looking at an MDM, like maybe, I don't know, simple, I'm thinking of simple MDM is a good one. Um, I recommend going ahead and getting that process started, reach out to Apple, um, put in that application, and then they'll just need your DUNS number, something you can easily look up um, and they'll get you set up with business manager account. It's just going to make your life so, so much easier. So much easier. And it's actually helpful if you need to go to the Apple store ever either. It's great because you get a different uh, service department. They take you to the special room. It's nice. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Um, I think this leads me to the thing that I I find very interesting about simple MDM. Zach, can we talk about federated authentication? Paris so excited about this. I really am. the more I learn about it, the more excited I am about it too. And you I know think what? We should do. I'm excited about else. anything that is one stop shop. I love that. I love it. Single yeah. sign on. Love single sign on. I love not having to track users down and make them remember stuff because we all know they won't. Right, Jordan? Right. Well, I actually have full faith in all users. And no, I think that no, they are, no. uh, they're, they're <laughs> capable of so much more than we give them credit. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> 
so Jordan drank the Kool-Aid. Jordan, <laughs> Jordan drank the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk about that. Yeah, that's a great topic. So starting, starting that out in again, something I can't show off in here, but you'll be able to see easily in your business manager. Um, Apple has this concept of what they call managed IDs. So if you have a thousand users signing into phones and they're owned by the company and they're all signing in with their own Apple ID, that's going to be hard to manage, right? You can't manage that. You know, they don't have shared storage. They can't, there's no collaboration. You can't, um, there's just a lot you can't do if they're using their own personal IDs. Apple lets you generate through business manager, what are called managed IDs. So managed IDs are IDs that are owned by the company. So again, these should be used for company owned devices, um, that let you, uh, do things like you can, um, they give you more control over the device. Essentially you can remove the IDs if you need to, right? So if somebody has got their iCloud account signed in and they're storing documents in there, and they leave, that's not what you want. So if you have a managed ID, they're storing stuff in iCloud, you can revoke that from them. You can take the ID away. You can, um, essentially it's, it's just an ID that's controlled by the company. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing is what, what Tara is getting to is you can connect up to, to uh, Azure Active Directory, um, and use federation to automatically create managed IDs based on your AD credentials. So if you have users who you want to be able to just use, um, Active Directory credentials to sign into their Mac or their um, phone or their iPad or whatever. You can totally do that. So as so, whenever once you set this process up, it usually takes about thirty minutes. Um, when a user signs into any Apple service um, using their Azure credentials, it's going to automatically generate a managed Apple ID inside of Business Manager if it doesn't already exist, and allow them to kind of use that single sign-on experience where um, it's replicating what's in Azure AD as far as credentials. Yeah, um, and you can do that, like I said, right in the moment. And you can actually do it for Google as well. We shouldn't just say Azure. It, it will do it for Google as well. But um, Apple uses Skim to provision and deprovision that account. So if you delete the account in Azure, it deletes it in Apple Business Manager. So I love it. I love no housekeeping. Yes. That's my fave. So, um, and again, great. we're not going to have time to talk you through it, but it takes about 30 minutes to get that federation set up and we will include all the documents. And so definitely worth your time to take the time to set it up. If you can automate it, you Absolutely. probably should. Yeah. If you can automate it, do it, do it. Exactly. I love it. And, and we'll, we'll have the documents in the description when yeah. this is posted to YouTube. Okay, so Zach, I'm seeing so many questions, so um, we probably should go to our speed round where Jordan and I try to stump you. Jordan, you think? I think before our questions, we should go to customer questions. There you go. Do you think so? You get, well, he's prepped for our questions, and I want to stump him. I want yeah, to make him look foolish Yeah, let's first. make him cry. Okay, if there's time for our questions, though, we'll ask him. Because, yeah, there's a whole bunch of questions. Okay, let's, let's do some customer questions. Let's right. do this thing. I'm going to hold my questions, though. Hey folks, how do we deal with the employees not on wired networks and skip the Wi-Fi setup because they forgot their Wi-Fi password? Do we manually enroll it? Does that take it out of supervised devices? Jancy IT. I, I got this I one. I got it. Uh, Zach? <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I was about to kick back there for a second. Um, so I, I may need to follow up the more detailed answer. I, I believe there is a way to just apply um, the MDM profile without connecting back, but in simple MDM is a cloud, um, cloud service. So it is a cloud, um, hosted, I would say application, but it's cloud-based. Um, so we do need, if you have devices that aren't going to be connected to Wi-Fi, we're, we're not going to really be able to manage them, um, full-time, right? So I, I recommend if you can just get those devices connected to either 4G Wi-Fi, if you're using Macs, you know, a, a hard connection, something like that, um, just to get them set up. And then again, if you're going to go forward without uh, internet in that situation, we're not going to be able to touch the devices. The nice thing is if they are connected to internet, we can update them or reconfigure them almost instantly. It takes seconds, um, but you are going to want that, that wireless connection. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, do, I'll do some follow-up though. And if I can find something about uh, some more information about setting them up off network, I'll, I'll send that over. Well done. Well done. I Good job, Zach. You've proven that you can uh, answer questions that are not on pre-prepared material. And we have more. <laughs> do, you want, oh, yeah. do, you, do you want some more? Let's, Let's keep stump going. Him. Let's stump Ask really hard ones. Let's do it. Okay. We are using Jamf. Is there a simple way to switch to Simple MDM without the users needing to do anything? Thanks. Hi, Rez. Here's hoping. Yeah, so... 
we, yeah, here's hoping we have some documentation um, about migrating between MDMs. It sort of comes down to, it depends on which types of devices you're using, right? So if you're using, if you have MacBooks, um, there is a script we can run. You can unenroll the devices. There's a script we can have you run. Um, and then that can, through, you know, you're still using business manager to point it at the enrollment, but then you can enroll the devices into simple MDM. If we're talking about iOS devices, um, you can do an enrollment by link. You can unenroll your devices from Jamf and do an enrollment by link. The one uh, caveat I will give you is if you want to go through that enrollment pro automated enrollment process, which we recommend, after you unenroll your devices from Jamf, you would have to wipe the iOS devices. Um, that's just an Apple. That's not an us requirement. That's an Apple requirement. Mm -hmm. So you can do it without wiping them and without bothering the users. But um, to get the full automated enrollment experience, you would need to wipe the, the iOS devices. But so just to make it a little less painless, though, Zach, you could have all your profiles set up it's in a similar fashion that you had in Jamf. And when you wipe it, you simply just deploy the new profiles, right? So it would it's a little bit of work, but not that terrible. In that, no, and that's a great point. And that's yeah. what I would highly recommend. What mm -hmm. I tell everybody is before you start moving anything, get a couple test devices, mm -hmm. set your profiles up, set your apps up, make sure those devices, because there's all that stuff's applying at enrollment, make sure those devices are how you want them before yeah. you start doing a mass migration. Yeah. Then you're not starting all yeah, the way right. over. No, right. You're, you're, it's a little bit of work, but then you're right back, you know, where you were in a new MDM that you like that's easy to use. Yeah. I would just have them side by side if it was me, set it up exactly the same. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Do you want one more before you get into your speed sure. round? Serve yeah. it up. Okay. Let's do this. We currently use, wait, it, it, how do you pronounce that again? Moss? Mass? Mass. Ma mass? I like Moss. Sure. Uh, Moss 360. Moss. And uh, it is not easy for existing phones to install the client. What is the process for enrolling in, and installing on existing devices with Simple MDM? Ed L. You send them an email with the link or a QR code. Yeah, for the so group you, that's, that's an option. So or, one thing that I do want to say is if you currently have your devices enrolled in an MDM, uh, you, you have to unenroll them from the other MDM first. Two MDMs cannot exist side by side on a single device. So that's one thing. Uh, but you can do, like we talked about earlier, the enrollment by link still. Um, we don't have an agent that you have to like install yourself. We'll install the simple MDM app if you want us to, but that's the only thing we really install. Um, so you could do the enrollment by link or you could do the automated enrollment like we talked about earlier. There's actually a, a previous video that I did on here that talks about enrolling um, devices if, if you we maybe want to link that or go back to look at that later. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little, it's pretty easy, pretty simple to do. Okay. We have more questions, but if you want to dive into some of yours, that's okay. Yes. We'll save these to the very end. It really, you're going to say that you take precedence over our wonderful listeners? We're going to stump him. We're going to go as fast as we can. We're oh. testing him. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay, Zach, ready? Did Zach leave? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay. I cannot tell you how many executives have annoyed me by saying, we want the company logo as the wallpaper. Make it. Oh, we're going there first. All right. Company we'll logo, Here's wallpaper. My iPad. So we have a profile that you can use to change the wallpaper on your devices. Now this does require supervision. This is one of the things we talked about earlier, right? Supervision is going through automated enrollment, enabling supervision is gonna give you some extra things that you can do. Um, so I've got this device, Darth Jar Jar, because he was a Sith Lord. I'm not gonna hear any sass about that. Um, and I've got him in the Death Star group, right? So I'm gonna apply this profile. Uh, we're gonna sign a profile that is a wallpaper profile that I have named the Sound of Jordan. And I think Jordan probably already knows what's coming here, but we'll give it a second. That device is going to take just a second. And then beautiful. <laughs> Look at that. The model looks, that's what, that's actually a, a picture of my mom. That's not even Jordan. So um, no Photoshop this, so. for that. That's actually you, <laughs> no Photoshop at all. You look very slim in there. I like it. Your it's, mom's handsome. Your mom's very handsome. Yeah. She's, she puts, takes a lot of pride in that beard. Great beard. <laughs> So that is how you can change the wallpaper. Uh, that does the lock screen as well, if you wanted to, for all of your iOS devices. Keep them coming. All right. Uh, I've mistyped my code so many times. I've locked it. How do I disable the activation lock? Disable activation lock. So activation lock is actually uh, whenever a user logs into a device uh, and signs into iCloud. That creates an activation lock, like a find my phone um, type situation. Uh -huh. So... If you create an if a user creates an activation lock on a device, this is again where we were talking about managed IDs prevent this, which is it's a good way to go if you want to. Um, 
But if they create an activation lock on a device, I think everybody who manages Apple devices has had an experience where a user's created an activation lock. Um, they've not been able to remove it. And then they've called Apple. Apple said, provide us a receipt. They don't have it. And now you own a brick, right? So the way that we deal with that is, oh, my iPad name changed. I forgot I re-enrolled it. The way that we deal with that is um, you can come in here and just literally click disable activation lock. And that's going to remove through the Apple MDM channels. That's actually going to remove the activation lock on the device. You don't have to call Apple. You don't have to cry. You don't have to throw a phone in the trash. It'll yes. save you a ton of time with one click. Okay. Um, I never want an Apple ID added to a phone ever again. Can you please make it stop? Make it so. Yeah, absolutely. We're kind of crossing over into Star Trek, but I'll take that. <laughs> so if you don't want... We, so you'll do this through profiles, right? So profiles are just what they sound like, right? I always talk about like um, profiles are kind of comparable to Windows group policy a little bit if you're from Windows world. So you can create what we call a restrictions profile. Restrictions profile is going to have a ton of stuff that you can lock down. Um, so inside of the restrictions profile, there is an ID option. Now, I could find it if you weren't looking. We're watching. Close your eyes. Hurry, we're watching. Faster. Do it. Um, oh, my gosh creation. Okay. Well, just so you guys know, I don't know. It's on this side somewhere. You can prevent your users from signing in with an Apple ID, right? So um, even if they want to use an Apple ID, it won't let them. There's a lot of other things you can lock down in here too. So I recommend that you take um, time to look at that while I'm stalling and trying to find where this option is. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do in here as far as locking down your devices, preventing them from doing different things, signing into different services, um, stuff like that. I cannot believe that I can't allow account modification. But well, now, now the question: so allow can, account modification. can you actually not find it? Or are you just trying to make a sales pitch of like, look at all these options? It look can at be, everything we have here. It can be both. I mean, uh, why not both? Allow account modification is the option. It prevents them from signing in with an Apple ID. If you're going to go that route, another thing that I recommend doing though is inside of your enrollment in your D, in your settings here, DEP is automated enrollment, pretty much the same thing. Um, we just haven't changed the name yet. You can come in here and you can skip the screen where they do the Apple ID and iCloud sign in, which I recommend um, because it's possible that they could sign in before the policy applies. So mm. you're going to want to block that okay. um, before. Perfect. All right. I'm going to read this question exactly as it is on the postcard. Web clip for help desk? <laughs> 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 that's beautiful I love, you just read any sentence and put a question mark at he it. will it's amazing um, it's amazing yes so web clips are a super useful concept uh in which maybe you have a, a website that you want your users to get to easily but you don't just want to bookmark it in chrome right or something like that you want them to have an actual app button on the screen um so using again using a profile you can create what we call a web clip so this one's called help me simple mdm support you're my only hope so we're going to go ahead. So that's going to take us out to the contact simple MDM support page. So we're going to go back to our group because again, you, you really want to manage things at a group level, unless you really like doing things one by one, which you shouldn't. Um, this is the way to go. So we're going to sign that out. I'm going to unlock my iPad so you can see it happening because I don't know if it's going to pop up. It should pop up right in this region, I think, but I'm often wrong. So let's watch. Okay. There it is. So I've created a custom logo that looks really bad now that I'm seeing it on the screen. Um, but if you go to that app now, so you can put this on all of your end users devices. If they, this is fun. Do you like your device? <laughs> you, should, you should get well, an Android. It live. I know. Yeah. Well guys pack it up. We're selling simple MDM. That's <laughs> That's it. It amazing. works amazing. Great. No, yeah. I don't know. So typically I'm sorry. I don't know why this is happening. Typically that app will open up directly to the, the simple MDM support screen. Um, you can link it to whatever URL you want, um, but for no apparent reason, it's not opening. That's because they know that you're busy doing this That's and right. not, uh, That's right. not available. We'll I just like watching second. how many times you clicked it. I hope it just starts just opening. I know that'd be amazing. All the different. That'd be amazing. <laughs> we'll move on to the next one. Times. All right. I, th I think it's time to go back to listener viewer questions okay. the important questions yeah we have uh, a few more got about three here in the queue are we ready all right we have a custom app deployed to our apple business manager account what do we need to do when pushing app updates what does the typical update timeline look like sincerely danny t I like that we can just that is a wait for zach 
Well, Zach's, no, he's frazzled. <laughs> he can't answer it. There is a place where you can put custom maps in, but it seems like this question means they want Simple MDM to make it. Yes? So there are. So you can use custom apps inside of mm-hmm. Apple Business Manager. Mm-hmm. We do give you the ability, um, pretend I'm not trying to make this work while I'm talking. Uh, so we do give you the ability inside of Simple MDM to upload custom apps to your catalog. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you come in here and you say custom app, yeah. you can um, add any IPA, PKG, DMG file here, mm-hmm. and we'll let you push those apps out to your devices. Now, the one caveat to that is it's a custom app. It's something that you know, it was built for you or something you've pulled from the internet. So we don't have a way of automatically updating that. Like we do our other applications that you would assign out. So you would have to upload new versions of it to push it out. Um, But uploading a custom app takes, I would say 30 seconds max, unless it's just huge. Um, And then anytime you you deploy an application, it's going to go out right away. So within seconds, you're going to see that app. As far as custom apps inside of um, Apple Business Manager, I am going to say I'm a little stumped. I'm not as familiar with the the concept there, um, but I know you can do it inside of Simple MDM. So uh, there you go. You did it. I'll cry on the webcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready for your next uh, next tier to, to fall. Yeah. Perhaps I missed something here, but does this prevent us from needing to set up an iCloud account for every user broken by Epicor? It does, if you want. It does. It that's the exact right answer. There's Tara, multiple. Go ahead, go ahead, you got it. There's multiple ways you can do it. I mean, if if I'm doing it again and I'm back in enterprise, that is what I would do. I, I would not want to ever have users have their own iCloud again, unless I was using managed Apple IDs. In which case, I would do the federated authentication where their Apple ID is their Azure ID. But there, there's a variety of different ways that you could set it up. And so that's why I linked like 17 docs to this webcast, <laughs> because Simple MDM gives you the flexibility to do it however you want, uh, because you might be in a bring, bring your own device environment. You might be in a big brother environment where you're like, nope, these are company devices. We're going to manage it all for you. So um, the answer is yes <laughs> and no. It's very flexible. That's a, that's a, that's correct. That's a good answer. All right, point for Tara, I guess. Two more questions in the queue here. We have supervised devices with the Simple MDM app installed. We request our users to launch the app and allow location access so that we can track the devices. Can we force this setting, Danny T? Unfortunately, uh, there's not a way to force it. That's another Apple limitation. That's not a a limitation that we put on you guys. Um, We're super fine with you being big brother if you want to. Um, Apple does require an opt-in. So if you have the device in your possession before you hand it out, you can set that up, opt-in to location tracking. But um, unfortunately, if the device is already in the field, the end user is going to have to opt into location tracking. Apple is just huge on security, even at the enterprise level. Apple. Sorry, guys. That's okay. All right. We have our final question from our viewers. Do you have any more, Tara, uh, of your stump questions for Zach? I can come up with some if you have, don't have any more. No, no, no. I just, I just didn't not, want to cut you short. He's there, not crying yet. There is, so, okay. well, yeah. this is, there our, is one. There is, there is one that kind of got collided into two questions. I just wanted to point out. Jordan said something about passcodes earlier. You can you can set a passcode policy that tells your end user devices that they have to have a passcode, what the passcode needs to look like, things like that. You can also add a device level. Let's say you get a phone back, you need some information off of it. The user set a passcode and you don't know what it is. Um, you can actually go into here and um, remove the passcode directly from here. So if you want to scroll down and it's probably right for clear passcode, that'll take the passcode off the device so you can get back into it. All right, yeah, and, I'm done interrupting now. And Zach, you can say, I want my passcode to be 12 characters if I want. I want it to be alphanumerical. Yes, you can do all that in profiles. Yeah, if you want to freak your users out, you can set alphanumeric passwords on iPads. So I do, yeah. Make it happen. Make it happen. Make all it right, so. final question of the day. Are we ready? Here it comes. Will you have certifications for admins? The Apple Consultants Network requests its members to have an MDM solution certification. Sincerely, Art Lab. I have no idea. Zach, do you know? So we don't currently. Um, it's something that we've talked about internally. Uh, I can't 
publicly say where we're at with that at the moment. Um, I can, I'll, I'll check in with our team again and, and see, you know, where we are in that process, what we're talking about, but uh, stay tuned and we'll get you some more information on that. Look, Kelly looks like Devin has a question that we didn't answer. Okay. Let me just read this one. Sorry, Devin didn't uh, notice uh, your question there. If the user doesn't restart the simple MDM app on their phone after a reboot, many times it can't be tracked if stolen or lost. Is there an easy way to ensure that the simple MDM app is always running? Hmm. Devin, just for future reference, put question before your question and we'll see it always. So, uh, as far as I, I've not, ex- I've actually not experienced that myself. So I don't think that's standard behavior. Um, I would recommend reaching out to our support team and they should be able to help you. Uh, they should be able to take a look at that w- with you and see what's going on and, and provide a solution. I'm just not that smart if we're getting down to it. No, Zach, don't say that. <laughs> that, that sounded like you were very mean about it. Oh no, I wasn't. I love <laughs> oh, Zach. No, Zach. Oh no, you're, you're fine. <laughs> Never do that. I would have rather you just agreed with me. That was oh man, <laughs> so me, mean. Yeah, me being the the off now. me being nice feels harsher than me being uh, snarky. N- now that you crushed his spirit, should we, should we exit? <laughs> Actually, Zach, stop sharing your screen. We want to see your big, beautiful face. Yes, again. let's see it. There we go. There he is. You did so hey good, guys. little buddy. <laughs> Still going, aren't you? <laughs> You know, uh, one final That's why thing. your only friend is right there next to you. <laughs> one, one final thing before we throw it back to you guys. Uh, you, you may have noticed in the chat, if you'd like to be notified uh, via email about upcoming webcasts, uh, we've, we've put a link right in there that you can, you can sign up and we'll send you an email about what the uh, weekly webcast is about. We'd love to have you on that list. Hop on into it. Yeah. And uh, I guess that's a wrap it up, guys. Mm. Oh, I got this. <laughs> this is my time to shine. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, as, as a general rule, mobile device management is not super enjoyable. No. Simple MDM makes it so it is actually not that bad. It's true. Which is high praise. I'm not saying that, I mean, the product's fantastic. To, to raise mobile device management to not that bad is high praise. Indeed. Uh, I want to shout out Brandon. I agree with his absolute disgust at the idea of bring your own device. Why would you pay for something like an iPhone and then allow a company to put that much control on it. I'm with them on that. Hmm. I, I just, I was kind of lost in the, lost in the weeds. I think bring your own devices in general, a bad idea for Terrible security idea. and your, mm-hmm. your, so, uh, I don't know. That's just my own opinion now that I'm off the rails. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for Zach for helping us. And thanks, thanks for Tara for making Zach cry with your mean words. <laughs> okay. Come back next week. You guys, Halloween time. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Danny T and Ed L Winners of PDQ Swag, send us your info to webcast at pdq.com. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you back here next week.